Hey everyone! In this video, I decided to revisit a type of dungeon tile I have actually made before. The river tiles that I made previously were very basic and easy to make, which is great, but ultimately I decided I wasn't too keen on them. So I set out to make a better looking tile set with some modular waterfalls. In this video, I use some newer techniques and materials I've never used before, which was a lot of fun, but also pretty frustrating at times. So to start out, I made some basic 3x3 three three inch tiles out of XPS foam and started to mark out where the river would connect to each tile. I measured 3 quarters of an inch in from the edges of the tile and made marks with a pen. These marks are the only part of the river tiles that need to be consistent to ensure the river has a seamless look when placing the tiles next to each other. In between those marks, when connecting them to the other side, it can look like whatever you want your river to look like. Simply draw the river shapes and try to mix them up for some variety. I made inline river tiles, 90 degree bends, three-way tiles, and four-way tiles. Once all the river tiles were drawn out, I measured my desired depth on the side of each of the tiles and drew a line. From here, I simply removed the foam. I used a combination of two knives, an X-Acto knife to cut the wavy lines of the river, and an Ulfa knife to cut a grid to remove the foam. I locked the Ulfa blade in place at the depth of the lines that I drew on the sides and then cut a grid. From there, it's pretty simple to make cuts from the side and remove the little cube chunks. Next, I textured the river bottom with some pre-mixed tile grout I got at Home Depot. This is a great material as it's very easy to apply and it creates a natural looking rocky bottom just with its own natural texture. I applied it to the bottom of the riverbeds and smeared it slightly up the banks of the river as well. I would say feel free to get as creative with this as you like. I kept mine pretty consistent, but you could definitely make some mounds in the middle of your river if you like. To make sure I had a clean line and connection between each tile, I made sure I applied the grout to two pieces at a time and then separated them with an X-Acto knife immediately after while they were still wet. I then covered everything in a black acrylic paint and matte Mod Podge mix before painting. Because these tiles would be used with my existing grass tile set, I made them to look the same which you can see later in this video. Next, I wanted to add some medium-sized rocks for variety. I bought this jar of pebbles from Michael's, but you could gather them in nature as well. These all got glued down with PVA glue, and after they dried, I did a little extra drip of a 50-50 mix of water and matte Mod Podge for some added adhesion. In addition to the medium rocks, I wanted some large rocks to stick up out of the water. So I took some bark chunks and glued them in place with some PVA glue as well. Every time I was going to be adding something new to the river bottom, or if I just wanted to see how something would look, I would put the river tiles together and dry fit it before gluing anything in place. I was pretty happy with how things were looking, so I decided to paint over everything. I mixed three colors I felt would look good and give me the desired look I was going for, but you can do whatever you want. I started with the shallower sides near the banks in a sandy yellow color. From there, I added my medium bluish color and then my dark bluish color in the center. Everything was applied wet so I could wet blend them together and get a nice looking gradient to create the illusion of depth. I blended from light to dark with dark being the center since it would be the deepest. Then taking my dark bluish color, I made it even darker and painted in some extra deep areas focusing around the large rocks mainly and also around some of the submerged medium sized rocks. This created more depth and overall realism to the river. I then painted the large rocks in a medium gray color and dry brushed the riverbed in the sandy yellowish color I used before. This would tie everything together as if the lighter color was the main sediment color you find in rivers and other bodies of water. I also dry brushed the large rocks in a light gray, but would later go back over them with this same sandy yellow color. Now that the river was painted and looking pretty good, I started to tend to the banks and grassy areas. First, the banks got a coating in a 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water before applying my dirt mixture. This is a mix of some random sifted potting soil that's in a pot at my house and a dry brown grout powder I got at Home Depot. I applied the dirt mixture to the glue and then patted the tile to get rid of any excess. Occasionally I would bring the dirt up onto the shore part of the tile to create some variety. Next I applied the grass in a similar manner. Applied the glue first and then the grass flocking and patted off any excess. To hold everything in place I first sprayed it all with some isopropyl alcohol and then dripped on my 50-50 mixture of matte Mod Podge and water with a pipette while it was still wet. Depending on how thick your flocking is, you'll need to use more isopropyl alcohol before applying your glue. I have a thin layer here, so not a lot of isopropyl alcohol is required. The reason I do this, and the reason everyone else does this, is to help the glue spread and penetrate all the foam. Otherwise, the glue mixture might just sit on top of the foam and not give you the desired protection that you're looking for. It's called something like capillary something something or whatever, 
basically I just call it science happens. I set those aside to dry and decided I wanted something more in the river bottom. So I went out into my yard and found this dead dry plant thing and broke it into smaller pieces to use as sunken branches. I did a dry fit first to see if they would look good and when I decided they would, I painted them all a dead light brown color. These got glued in place and then dry brushed with that same sediment sandy yellow color. And just like that, the river tiles were ready for water effects. But first, it was time to build the modular waterfalls. These were made much like the tiles, but in a much smaller form factor, of course. I basically cut some three inch long by three eighth inch wide pieces of XPS foam and removed the center part to match with the river tiles. I then carved the edges to match my grass tile set. I'll be sure to link to that video up here in the corner. In order to make these modular, I used magnets. Magnets are a gaming terrain crafter's best friend in my opinion, uh, but I made a total of 16 waterfalls so I chose 16 river tiles and added magnets to one side of each of them. Once I got this done I realized I needed to remove a little bit more XPS foam from the face of the waterfall between the edges, basically just to create a spot for the water to fall down. So I cut that away with an X-Acto knife. They would eventually get the same grout, paint, dirt, and grass treatment the tiles got, but it was time to pour some resin. I'd never personally poured resin before, but I had witnessed it a great deal at a job I once had. So I bought a two-part resin from Hobby Lobby and prepped the tiles by damming the edges with some masking tape before pouring. I didn't want a lot of color in my resin mix because I was really happy with my paint job on the river bottom, but I wanted a little, so I added a mix of yellow, blue, and a little brown. If I did this again, I would have added a little bit more tint to the mix, but it still looked really great. I also wanted to make sure the level of resin would match in each tile, so I lined them all up together and began pouring slowly, trying to keep them at about the same height. I tried my best to make sure that they would line up seamlessly, but this was easier said than done. Because this was my first experience in pouring resin, I ended up mixing too much resin to be poured fast enough before hardening in the cup. Half of my first mix began to harden and was not able to be poured, so I had to make another half batch to complete it. A lesson hard learned, but now learned. Now there are a number of preventative measures you can do when mixing your resin to prevent bubbles, but you'll likely get them anyway. In other crafting videos I've seen where they're pouring resin, they all tend to use heat to eliminate their bubbles after they've poured. Whether it's like a blowtorch or a heat gun, it's very effective. However, I think there's a better way to do this without risking any extreme heat next to your very heat sensitive foam. Isopropyl alcohol can actually be sprayed on the surface of the resin while it's still wet and will pop the bubbles. Like right here in this shot, there is a bubble in the center of the shot here in the reflection on the surface of the resin. But once I spray it with isopropyl alcohol, it's gone, along with any of the other tiny bubbles that you probably didn't notice. This works incredibly well with no risk at all. Once the tiles were all cured, I removed the tape and they were looking very, very nice. The resin that is next to the tape dam that you make will create a little bit of a lip or ramp. And you can actually just cut this away, sand it and polish it. Uh, but that would be a lot of cutting, sanding and polishing. So I set them all up to see if this would even really be a problem. And I'm happy to say that I really don't think that they would make that big of a difference if I did remove all that material. So I saved a ton of time here, which was good because the waterfalls took me way longer than I wanted. I ended up making five different heights for the waterfalls. I stacked some of my existing dungeon tiles to make some templates out of some scrap paper. I then took those templates and cut some clear mylar sheets to create a sort of structure for the waterfalls. Once those were cut, I used water effects by Woodland Scenics to attach them in place. This is where some problems started to begin. The water effects medium is a really great medium, but definitely has some learning curves. It can be pretty temperamental and finicky. When I attached the mylar, it created a kind of seal that caused the water effects to not cure, so it just remained white. So I peeled them off and used super glue instead. Once that dried, I took the water effects medium and thinly brushed it on the fronts and the backs of the mylar to create my first layer of water. After I did this, I realized it was going to take forever to build up layers of water effects to the right height that would line up with the river water. Putting down a thick bead of water effects would not dry clear in a reasonable amount of time or maybe even at all. So I ended up using the clearest hot glue I could find and built up a good layer against another masking tape dam. I learned that I could apply the water effects to some glass or parchment paper and create thin strips of water to apply separately. 
I thought this would have a cool effect so I tried it out. I made a batch of several strips on a glass baking sheet and let them dry. I peeled them off and they peel off alright on glass, uh, but it's a little bit annoying to be honest with you. So for the next batch I tried applying it to parchment paper. It definitely peels off easier, but for some reason that I do not know why, water effects medium does not dry absolutely clear on parchment paper. It actually turns out kind of cloudy, even after 24 hours. So it was pretty much all useless, so frustrating, so much wasted time. So I went back to the glass and made another batch before I realized I could probably just get a similar result if I applied it directly to the waterfalls like I did on the first layer. If you plan on making something like this, learn from my mistakes, forego applying them separately on a different sheet of whatever, just apply them directly to the piece that you're working on. Anyway, I dry brushed each layer with white before adding the next layer, and once I was satisfied, they were done. And honestly, they look pretty dang good. The last thing I did was add some ripple texture to the surface of the river tiles. I did this with simply using Gloss Mod Podge. When applying it, you don't want to apply the Mod Podge on haphazardly because it can create a lot of bubbles, which will show up once it is dried and will look bad. Remember, we tried to eliminate bubbles with resin to begin with. I applied it deliberately, yet delicately, with a brush before blowing it around with an old airbrush that I forgot I had that had never even been used. I used a straw at first, but I got lightheaded and spit was getting all over my project. Uh, but once it dried, it had a really nice looking surface. And just like that, everything was done. Took longer than expected, but I'm really thrilled with the result. Having some nicer river tiles that have a better cohesion with the rest of my outdoor terrain really, really makes a big difference. And to have modular waterfalls on top of that is honestly amazing. Let's take a look at the overall progress of a single tile throughout this entire process. 